Microsoft has reportedly sold 18.5 million consoles. And by Microsoft, you made some firm that... Yeah, yeah, purportedly, purportedly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, to me, uh, to me is honestly a good number. It is a good number. Yeah, I think the Sony number is 32 million? 32 or 33, somewhere in there. Yeah, so uh, this is closer to two-thirds than it is to one-half, which right. has been the historic norm. So, mm -hmm. well, since Xbox One. Um, so that's good. Yeah. I mean, it's... I'm guessing a bunch of those are Xbox Series S. Oh, I would fine. imagine There's nothing a bulk of them that. are that number. Yeah, be. like 80% or something or 70%. Um, but yeah, great. And uh, Sony already kind of took the shackles off in the sense that they said their supply chain crisis is over and this year will be much better for PlayStation 5. So maybe the lead widens. I don't know. Microsoft hasn't really said the same. but Yeah. But I feel like Series S has been widely available. It was on sale over the holidays. So if they can get caught up with Series X, yeah, it's good. Maybe. Sure. Maybe not. But maybe. Sure. What? I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. I'll have everyone know that Brad just interrupted my morning without I did. even <laughs> the slightest pleasantry. Rudely. Barged through the door and said, we're recording a podcast. Smile. <laughs> He's not so wrong. A little, uh, a little off schedule here, but yes. Usually, I typically type three little letters to Paul Throt at right. 8.57 wow. every day. The letters R, D, Y. And then I and wait I for him to respond. One letter. And then Y. I Instead of the two letters, I'd like to use the first of which is F. <laughs> but anyway. Today, I just called it in it. Didn't knock. It's okay. I always doubt myself on moments like this because it's Teams, right? So you could have been typing like, hey, where are you? You know. Could have. Could have. But I didn't. Didn't. <laughs> uh, what else matter. is going on? I'm sitting here at the same time every day. You know? Chrome is a little bit better on Apple Silicon Max. Yeah. Did you notice uh, the latest release of Chrome, which is, I don't remember, version 11,712 or something? <laughs> Close. Um, <laughs> something like that, uh, is basically copying the sleeping tabs feature from mm -hmm. Windows, uh, from uh, Edge. It makes, I, I don't know, it's, I guess it's likely and probable that Microsoft submitted that as a, yeah, it could something have been. to open. I don't know. I, I, but it's the same feature. I mean, it's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Right. I think. I mean, anything that makes, uh, I would, I would imagine it's useless the same, RAM is to be celebrated. I guess the real key would be: Does it show up on what is it? Brave? Doesn't don't they use Chromium? Yeah, uh, it, it hasn't, um, and I hope it doesn't. <laughs> but um, you know, whatever. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, that's a good point. You know what's been holding me back from uh, using Bing Chat, Paul Threat? <laughs> well, that could be a long list. What is it, Brad? Smooth scroll. Smooth scroll. There you yep. go. Yeah. I'm thinking after like 112 days or so, and and a, about 112 different little replay you know fixes and stuff they'll probably get it half right and then um what is this new microsoft that just ships stuff you know yeah <laughs> okay, but here you go just uh let us know what you think and if it tries to destroy the world we'll uh we'll fix it that's actually paul why i didn't ask if you were ready i was just being the new microsoft. yeah just being microsoft <laughs> you're ready <laughs> i mean they're, they've basically become the kool-aid man yep yeah right? it's... exactly it's interesting. Um, and like I said, when they originally announced Bing AI, as I keep calling it, mm -hmm. um, uh, very against type for the company, a uh, very conservative company in the sense that it moves slowly and deliberately and mm -hmm. generally, you know, uh, just to come out explosively like that. Um, I don't know. It, it's I don't know what's happened here. It's not like we have had a change of leadership or anything. I mean, no. I don't I don't know what the. Maybe they just maybe they just looked at the numbers and they're like, we're going to have a really crappy year if we don't do some growth. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, maybe. I like it's All we can do is guess. They're never going to talk about it, so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. They're violent and angry is the way I feel Microsoft <laughs> is shipping angry. these days, but. <laughs> yes. Yes. You guys wanted updates, so here they are. Uh, yeah, exactly. Be careful what you wish for. Isn't there a movie like Any Given Sunday, but we could just call it Any Given Day for Microsoft? Any Given Patch Tuesday. Yeah. 
<laughs> Every day is Patch Tuesday. Any given day the is ship Patch button. Tuesday. Yep. <laughs> yep. There was a little bit of fun posted around. I know. I think Paul, you have written about this some as well. <laughs> like this Windows 12 stuff po- 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 <laughs> got posted on Twitter. It, I think it was because of the Intel Meteor Lake, which is their chips coming next year. By Maybe the way, it's... I just want to point out. I early on, I did. This was a supposition. This was not based on internal information or anything but very early on i blurted out i i would i would be surprised if windows 12 required an mpu and then you kind of think about it for a minute and you're like well let's scale that one back you know but then you hear that ai is going to be the main focus of windows 12 and you think then i i kind of revisited that and i said you know i wouldn't be surprised i mean they uh, they very deliberately um limited the amount of pcs that can update to windows 11 both through the hardware requirements and by not releasing an, a long-term servicing channel version for businesses, maybe they do it again for Windows 12, you know? And, um, you know, we'll see. It, it's probably more likely that there'll be a Windows 12 for everybody, and if you have an MPU, it'll be mm-hmm. better, you know? And maybe some of those AI features don't even come out otherwise or whatever, but Meteor Lake is it will have an MPU. AMD is going MPU. Qualcomm already has MPU. You know, like I've been saying, I, I again, this is all just supposition or maybe educated guessing, but um, the, the world is freaking out over this AI stuff right now. I mean, it's the what's it called? Strike when the what's hot? When the <laughs> the hammer, hot. the anvil, the iron, whatever that thing is. Do that. Do that thing. Maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe. <clears throat> I'd be yeah. curious to see if they would ever release uh, like a PCI Express card. That's is it. PCI Express, whatever, PCIe card. Whatever, yeah, does that have enough bandwidth? I don't know. I would, uh, I would be shocked probably, if it doesn't, because GPU. you think about what high-end GPUs do these days. Right, yep, yep. It could be, yeah. I mean, if they and come I out and say you, it needs I... more bandwidth than uh, 4090 Ti or whatever the hell NVIDIA is up to right now, okay. I would get a little concerned. Okay, that's Because your power supply would probably explode. You need 2,000 watt I do know that supply. Intel is going to use M2-based um MPUs for I think the current gen mm. desktop chipset. So that's another route. Yeah, yep. That's a fascinating thing right there. Um, this is like uh, like buying a Mathco processor for a 486 SX. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a strange world. And um, listen, we're we're also hitting at a nice time of uh, device repairability and serviceability. Yeah, PC just... makers in this case are starting to release laptops you can pop the top back off really easily and access most of the internal pro, uh, components in every case i would say well in most cases you can do the ssd in many cases it's also ram and you have like the wireless card whatever you know there's a couple of other little cards but some laptops support two m2 slots right mm-hmm. and you could one's empty and you could pop an mpu in there or whatever um this might be a nice little aligning of trends you know maybe it's, yeah maybe i still I still question what the NPU is going to offer. We'll wait and see. But I mean, if their big pitch is like well, they can do background blur with your webcam, like that's, eh, that's not going to well, be. Well, that's going to be one of like a dozen things, right? I, I mean, I, I rather than look at like what the particular features are, I would say the question is going to be whether any of that stuff works at all if you don't have it. And that, I think maybe that's what it does. Like the NPU enables AI, whether it's valid or not. You could almost picture them you know, enforcing that like you, you know, and there'll be workarounds and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, it wouldn't be surprising to me that they required this for that stuff. That, I think that's going to, I think that's going to be the baseline to and do the, big the AI question, stuff. Paul Ferrat, mm-hmm. Does anyone care? Right. That is a big question. Yeah. I mean, it's, are they, I am I going to get smarter that. recommendations? I, like, is that the, right. Well, one of the one of the features uh, or sets of features really that comes in uh, this moment two thing that just came out this week is that Windows Studio Effects thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, speaking of this, uh, riddle me, Batman. I just I I openly wondered about this on Windows Weekly last night. Um, you could run Windows 11 on ARM on a Mac. A Mac has an MPU. It's called a Neural Engine. Does that mean I can access Windows Studio Effects on a Mac in virtualization? I don't know. That's kind of a theoretical thing right now, but that would be kind of interesting, right? Why not? I was trying to think where the bottleneck would be and all that, and I think it's just the whole process. But yeah, exactly. The whole thing—the whole process is a bottleneck. Yeah. yeah. It, it, the answer to that question probably is no. Um, but still, 
Mm, yeah. Interesting. I mean, I'm not trying to be a an AI Debbie Downer. It's more so like if Microsoft is going to no, run, they're with being this, realistic about it. It's yeah, like what's fine. the what's the Google Maps feature that the iPhone had? What's the the killer yeah. title that X Halo? Well, when Halo when, when it was good, right? Uh, right. Because what's going? I don't get... think there is one. Although it may be this answer engine thing. You know, um, there's no real integration today between Windows 11 and Bing AI, despite the marketing claims, and despite, by the way, every headline on earth. Thanks everybody. Um, it just hands it off to a browser, which is hard coded to be Edge, but doesn't need to be Edge. The browser has nothing to do with this process <laughs> that happens on the back end. It's a, it's the most uh, superfluous thing on earth. But whatever. Um, but maybe that changes, right? I, I, I really do think that the the big thing about AI is going to be not just the back-end cloud, which is super important, and not just the front-end thing, which is also super important, but rather the combination of those things. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, we'll see. I, is there a... I spend a lot of time getting rid of search on Windows. You know, it's interesting to me that we may seek it out. You know, is there a mm -hmm. group of people that not just uses it, but now we'll use it in a very different way. Like what's the weakest part of search in Windows today? I would argue, because you could make a big list there, but I would argue it is its integration with the internet, right? I look at search on Windows as something I want to use. I want to access my files, which could be in the cloud, by the way, right in OneDrive or wherever. Uh, absolutely want it for that. But I can tell you what I don't need is what it says today, which is 10 benefits of owning a pet. Yikes. Most popular dog names, uh, tips for first-time pet owners. Good stuff, Brad, you know, good stuff. But maybe there is a group of people. I'm not like a normal person. I'm not like a mainstream user. I mean, maybe maybe there's a use case I'm missing here. I don't know. The thing that will be fun to watch for, and you know they're going to do this, <laughs> is the next earnings report, or they'll have some puff piece before then, that oh, says, yeah. look how much Bing search growth has occurred because we've launched this and they're they're taking every time you put a letter and hit enter into that little right. box as an individual search and they're going to be like ta -da. Oh. Uh, if you open search right now like on, on my system i've disabled um search highlights right mm -hmm. but if you just windows key q whatever i just bring up the search whatever this thing's called search just bring up search there are literally three bing logos at the top of this thing there are three yeah like what we get it it's your brand jesus <laughs> like what it's crazy like what i don't, I don't know there's a little this whole thing is so weird i don't understand what's happening here bing will continue bing. Did we, until morale did we agree bing was terrible was that the thing no i thought we all agreed on that 